give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Christians and friends, Hope Covenant Kingdom Ministries Weekly Bible Study is now in session. We come to you each and every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. This is Lesson 22. And on today, we will, we will be talking about forgiveness. I am your host, and I am Pastor Michael Body. If you enjoy this hour of teaching and of worship, why don't you give us a call this week at area code 773-924-2790. We are a ministry of Hope Covenant Kingdom Ministries, Chicago, Illinois, Bronzeville. Scripture reading the 67 number of the Psalms. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O oh God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all of the ends of the earth shall fear him, the word of God.
Ministries Weekly Bible Study via Facebook Live. We come to you each and every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. We thank you for tuning in, brothers and sisters. On tonight, uh, we're on Lesson 22, and our subject is Forgiveness. I am your pastor and teacher, amen, Pastor Michael Ibadi. We thank you, uh, every one of you that were kind enough to tune us in, amen, at this 7 o'clock hour. Thanks be unto God that give it us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. For he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We don't have nothing new to tell you tonight. We just want to tell you the same thing we tell you each and every Tuesday night. It makes no difference what you think of me, but it makes a lot of difference what I think of you. And if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. For the God I serve, he's able to do anything but fail. Might I encourage you by saying to you, look to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing that all of your help cometh from the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I just want to stop and tell somebody on tonight. Amen. That your victory is in your praise and God inhabits the praise of the saints. So you ought to praise him on tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, those of you who have, who have uh, tuned in. So happy to have you, each and every one of you tonight. Amen. My cousin Lenora, you here every Tuesday. God bless you. I love you. Amen. 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 Uh, I need you all to do something for me. Uh, we got there. Uh, we got Adel Lemons. We got Coretta Krishna. We got the uh, uh, sister Priscilla Moore from uh, Evening Star Missionary Baptist Church. My church home. 2050 West 59th Street in Chicago, Illinois. Bishop Vesta Lewis Dixon is our pastor. Amen. We're we happy to have you to share with us. And we invite you to open up your Bibles and we're just going to talk uh, about forgiveness. Amen. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is something that a lot of us have a problem with. When we do something to folk, we want to be forgiven. But it's difficult for us to forgive others. Forgiveness is what? Forgiveness is unlocking the door to set someone free and then realizing you were the prisoner. Somebody's not going to get this to next Tuesday. Hey, amen. Forgiveness is unlocking the door to set someone free and realizing that you were the prisoner. So unforgiveness calls us to be imprisoned within our own existence. Amen. What is forgiveness? What is forgiveness? Amen. Amen. Forgiveness in the Bible is a release of a dismissal of something. Amen. It could be something somebody said to you. Uh, a lot of us are holding on to things that happened 20 years ago. Uh, we can't speak to people three and four days. Uh, 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 something happening during your childhood and you still have not forgiven that individual. Amen. But God has forgiven us for our sins. Not only did he forgive us, but he sent his son down to earth and he went to the cross and forgave us for our sins. So forgiveness is a release. It's a dismissal. And let me, let me say this. A lot of us say, I, 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 I can forgive, but I, I can't forget. 
And a lot of time, but not in all cases, it's difficult sometimes to not forget, depending on the uh, depth of whatever you went through with the individual. But if you truly love the Lord, then God's Spirit will allow you to forgive to a point where you won't think about it as much. And when it come up, you won't hold a grudge. Forgiveness is an act of love. What is love? What is love? Amen. Love, love is, what, what, what is love? Love is giving and expecting nothing in return. God bless you, Minister Monica Body, my sister. God bless you. Amen. Sister Harriet Thompson Wells, God bless you. Love is giving. And you know, it's hard. It's difficult for us, even those of us who call ourselves believers and followers of Christ, to forgive our brother. Amen. The forgiveness we have in Christ involves the release of sinners from God's just penalty and the complete, I like that word complete, <laughs> amen, complete dismissal of all charges against us, amen. And I want you all to jot that down, Romans 8 and 1, look at it later, Romans 8 and 1. God dismisses, in other words, he blots out all of our sins and iniquities in the sea of forgetfulness that it won't rise up again on this side. What am I saying? God forgives us, so we ought to learn how to forgive others. We living in a house with folk that we won't even speak to. Come on, somebody. Because, why? Because either they won't forgive us or we won't forgive them. Colossians 1 and 14 says, That in God, beloved Son, we have what? Redemption. We have redemption through God's Son, Jesus Christ. The forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of of sin. What makes you think that you are so special? Amen. What make what have you done different from anybody else that you deserve forgiveness of sin? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Amen. That whosoever believe it on him shall not perish. And how many know that sin will destroy you? And because of that, God sent his son to forgive us from our sins. The Bible translates... The phrase like this, the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sins penalty. Did you get it? The cancellation of sin penalty. What is sins penalty? For the wages of sin is what? Death. God bless you, Sister Roy. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God's gracious forgiveness. And you notice I use the word gracious. God's gracious forgiveness of our sin is to be the measure of our gracious forgiveness of others. We need to look at our level of forgiveness and the level that God has forgiven us. 
And I would say that I can't even begin to measure by percentage or any other means of measurement how many times that God have forgiven me when I messed up. Amen. And don't fool yourself. You messed up too. And then a lot of us, we still messing up now. Amen. But yet, when we messed up, God loves us so much that he forgave us. But when it's our opportunity to forgive others, we all grudges. Amen. We just say, no, I don't hold no grudge. I, I just don't talk to them no more. I don't mess with them no more. When I see them, I go the other way. Let me serve notice on you. Then you have not forgiven. As we said earlier, forgiveness is an act of love. Suppose God decided that because Michael body, amen, sin. And the Bible does say today, remember, remember Adam and Eve today that they eat of the fruit in the garden. He said, you shall surely die. You all remember that. You also remember the wages of sin is death. And how many of you don't sin? <clears throat> Amen. But there's more than one kind of death. There's a physical death, a spiritual death. But God have sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. Yet when we was on our way to hell, Jesus came down and gave his life. Let's look at Ephesians 4 and 32. Or should I say, let's jot it down. To some people, to some people, amen, forgiveness may seem like a weakness. You know, a lot of us feel like if I forgive them, then they didn't punk me out. You know, we use that. We think, you know, being a Christian, sometimes you have to give up what? The right for the wrong. Sometimes you have to be punked out. Amen. And whether you uh, uh, recognize it or not, Jesus was punked out. When he went to the cross, hadn't done nothing, took your sins and my sins on his shoulder and then said to his father, if it be your will, let this cup pass for me. He didn't have to do it, but he did. So forgiveness may seem like a weakness to a lot of us. Or it might seem like we are letting an undeserving person win. We are letting an undeserving person person that we know that are wrong and that have wronged us and then we said I forgive you I've never been in a position where I had a family member killed but can you imagine how it would be to be in a courtroom and I saw something similar to that uh, on the news and on Facebook, a family where another family member had got killed by that family member. A member of that family. And that whole family could not forgive. I know you, I know what we're thinking. We're thinking, well, I, I never forget. I never killed nobody before, but you lied. Amen. 
You stole. Nah, I don't steal. Yes, you do. Malachi, he said, Will a man rob God? Yeah, rob me in tithes and offerings, bring all the tithes unto. So, so all of us have sinned. Our very nature is sin, but yet God, in his infinite wisdom, forgave us. So we feel that because we forgive uh, a person that in our eyesight is undeserving, amen, that they deserve to be punished in our eyesight, we feel like we allowed them to win. But I come to tell you that one who forgives is victorious. But it has no connection, amen, to weakness at all. Forgiveness has no connection to weakness or even to emotions. A lot of us would try to compare forgiveness to an emotional state, to a weak state. But I came to serve notice that forgiveness is a love state. When you forgive somebody, what you are saying, Jonathan, you're saying, you did me wrong. That's what forgiveness says. But I love you because God helped me somebody love me. Instead, Forgiveness is an act of the will. Forgiveness is an act of the will. Forgiveness is not granted because a person deserves to be forgiven. Amen. All of us, every single, everyone that's listening to me on tonight, including myself, we deserve to go to hell. But by the grace of God. He allowed. His son. To save us. From a burning hell. No one. Deserves. To be forgiven. We like to look at other folks. Sins. We like to look at. Uh, other folks fault. Well that person is a drunk. That person get high. That person carries a gun. That person is a game banger. That person is a hole monger. That person is a thot. That person is a slut. That person smoke loud. Or that person smoke weed. That person is a burglar. That person is a felon. Even if I didn't name your sin. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. And let me tell you something about sin. When I was a little boy, my pastor told me, sin is a small word, three letters, S-I-N. But you can't even spell sin without putting yourself in it. Because when you spell it, you say S, then you say I, N. So you in sin, I is in the middle of the S and the N. So none of us can live above sin. Amen. Forgiveness is not granted because a person deserves to be forgiven. None of us. Get over it. Now you may not be a homosexual. You might not be a lesbian. Some of our attitudes are so nasty. Some of us don't know how to talk to folk. But we can see other people's faults. Forgiveness is a deliberate act of love. 
A deliberate act of mercy and a deliberate act of grace. When you forgive somebody, you know what's in forgiveness? Love is in forgiveness. Mercy is in forgiveness. And grace is in forgiveness. Amen. I invite you to share this hour. We got about a half hour left. I, I, I invite you all to share it with somebody. Because somebody you know needs to forgive somebody. Somebody needs to forgive. So I'm inviting you all to share this last 30 minutes. Forgiveness is a decision to not hold something against another person. That's what forgiveness is. It's making a decision that Michael Body said something I didn't like. And I even heard folks in my family say, I just don't like Michael Body. How can you say you love God whom you never seen but hate your brother who you see every day? The Bible say you are lying. And the truth is not in you. And let me tell you something. If you don't like Michael Body, you can't make it in. But guess what? If Michael Body don't love you, he can't make it in. So forgiveness is a decision not to hold something. We got to stop holding stuff. And you know why we hold a lot of stuff? Because we don't communicate. Somebody say, body did so-and-so. And you run off with it with an attitude. The Bible say, if you find your brother overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, not with an attitude. Some of us can't even talk without an attitude. Amen. Your attitude ought to be gratitude. That's why there's so many generational curses. That's because we don't have enough love. And remember I said that forgiveness is what? Love. We got family members that go to jail. We can still love them. We can still forgive them. I know a lot of times we say, well, I don't have to put nothing on their books. I don't tell them, do, do that. Do, that's your decision to make. I can't tell you who book to put some money on. But I can tell you that forgiveness includes love. Again, forgiveness includes mercy and it includes grace. So if God loved them, if God had mercy on them and God had grace, then God forgave them. Why can't we forgive them? So forgiveness is a decision not to hold something against somebody despite what he or she have done to you. I know that's not easy. You don't have to tell them. It's hard. It's some things that have happened in my life. It's some folk that have been real close to me that have done things to me that, that, and have said things to me. And, and I have went months and weeks and years holding on to it, not realizing that I wasn't hurting them, but I was hurting me. Amen. Amen. What is forgiveness of others? Forgiveness of others. Forgiveness is also an essential part of the life of a believer. Church folks. I don't understand church folk that can't, can't forgive. Amen. We can't forgive nobody. And nobody right in the church but us. We don't have to always agree. 
but we can be agreeable. Ephesians 4 and 32 commands, be kind and compassionate to one another. It don't take too much to be kind and compassionate. And it goes further to say, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God, did you get that? In Christ God forgave you. And that verse is also similar to Colossians 3, 13, which says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. I know when some of you all are saying it's easier said than done. I understand that. I've been in your shoes. And sometimes I'm still guilty. But I thank God that God wasn't like me. And that when I was in my sins, when I was on my way to hell, when I was too mean to live and wasn't fit to die, God reached down and rescued me, picked me up out of the miry clay, and place my feet on a solid rock. Amen. The key in both passages of those scripture is that we are to forgive each other as God has forgiven us. Why do we forgive? Why? Why? That's, that, that should be easy for any of you. Why, why do we forgive the reason we forgive uh, 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 Dr. Craig is because God has forgiven us. God has forgiven us. There should not be any problem for us to forgive anybody. God gives us a reason. <clears throat> God gives us a purpose. God gives us the principle of forgiving one another because he has forgiven us. The Bible tells us that we are to forgive those who sin against us. Forgive those who sin against us. It don't make no difference if they're white, black, Hispanic, whatever race, whatever ethnicity, whether they're man, whether they're woman, whether they're fat, whether they're skinny, whether they're tall. What the Bible tells us to forgive. Amen. Those who sin against us. Look at 1 John 1 and 9. It says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. Wow. That's enough to blow your mind. Did you get that? Faithful, number one. Just, number two. He is faithful and just, number three, to forgive you. And then number four, and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Ain't God good? But all God wants us to do is to forgive. Now, refusing to forgive a person, it demonstrates resentment, bitterness, and anger. None of which are attributes of a growing Christian. Bitterness, resentment, anger. Those are not the attributes of a believer. Those are not the characteristics of a Christian. 
God promises that when we come to him, when we come to him, when we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness, that he freely grants it for the sake of Christ. Look at God. Somebody shout hallelujah. 1 John 1 and 9. Likewise, the forgiveness we extend to others, the forgiveness we extend to who? Others. Don't always expect folk to forget. Well, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean to say it like that. We can take it. We can dish it out. But we can't take it, uh, uh, Reverend Arthur Williams. We dish it out, but we can't take it. Likewise, the forgiveness we extend to others should know no limits. Should know no limits. What is forgiveness in relationship to salvation? Uh-oh, now we're getting somewhere. Let's take that word forgiveness and then put another word with forgiveness. Forgiveness and then put salvation. Amen. Forgiveness and salvation. Forgiveness is a integral, integral part of salvation. It works both ways. When you become saved, then you become a forgiver. When you forgive, you are forgiven, and then you can become saved. When Jesus forgives our sins, our transgressions, our trespasses, our iniquities, they are all erased. Look at all them things I just said. What he forgives? Our sins, trespasses, iniquities, and transgressions. Don't just forgive, but he erases. He takes this eraser. But if somebody owed us $5, we can't forgive you. You told me you was going to pay me Friday. You a liar. That's what you are. I never loan you another five dollars. I never loan you a dollar. Matter of fact, don't say nothing else to me. Don't say nothing else to me. Suppose, suppose God was like us. Forgiveness of sin is comparable to financial debt debt being erased. You hear that? Forgiveness of sin is comparable to financial debt. There's an old saying, never loan what you cannot give. I hope y'all got that. Never loan what you cannot afford to give somebody. Why did I say that? Because if you loan body five dollars and that five and he don't pay that five dollars back to you and it's going to cause you to have an unforgiving spirit, you have made yourself a prisoner to body and a prisoner to sin. Wow. Forgiveness is unlocking the door. To set somebody else free and then realizing until you set them free that you are the prisoner. Somebody going to get this by next Tuesday. Did y'all get it? Forgiveness is unlocking the door and setting somebody free and then realizing, wow, I was the prisoner. I... I was the prisoner because I couldn't let it go. Maybe that $5 wasn't worth you 
holding that spirit of unforgiveness. Maybe that ride you gave somebody. And see, we get angry over trivial stuff. Yeah, when I had my car, I didn't mind dropping you off, but that's okay. That's all right. You got your income tax check now. All your friends don't hear from you. Amen. And don't let somebody say, look, I, I, I need to borrow $100 from you. I'll pay you back on a, 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 when I get my check. It doesn't mean because you loan them, they don't necessarily have to loan their money to you. Then we'll turn around and get angry enough to become a prisoner to the fact that they decide to keep their own money in their pocket. Amen. And so we begin to allow ourselves to trans trespass against them. So forgiveness is an integral part of salvation. Amen. As we grow in Christ, we have to understand whatever it is, not just church stuff, not just tithes, but on your job. When you drive in your car and somebody try to get in your lane, you try to knock them off, off the road, you haven't forgiven them. You're ready to fight road rage. Somebody's going to get killed because of what? Unforgiveness. Forgiveness of sin. When Jesus said, it is finished, I like that. When Jesus said, it is finished, what did, what did he do? He had somebody say he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. He gave up the ghost. He died. But when he said it was finished from the cross, in John 19 and 30, he was literally saying, it is paid in full. Amen. Jesus took the punishment that we deserve. Watch this. So when God forgives us of our sins, we are free. We no longer live under that debt. Our sins are completely blotted out. God will never hold that sin against you. Why? Because when Jesus was on the cross, he said and he declared, it is finished. Look at Psalms, jot that one down, Psalms 103 and 12. It is impossible to have salvation without forgiveness. If you're going around telling folk that you saved, that you got the Holy Ghost, just because you dancing, just because you speak in tongues, just because you pay tithes, and you have an unforgiving spirit, I come to serve notice on you, you are not saved. Again, it is impossible to have salvation without forgiveness, forgiveness, because they are intertwined. Salvation is God's deliverance from the consequences of sin. It is God's deliverance. That's what salvation is. Once God forgives us, from the consequences of our sins, then we are saved. God's salvation in Christ is the ultimate example of forgiveness. God's salvation. Yes, you read the book of Romans, that if you would believe it, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be what? Saved. And that's only because of the death 
burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we are saved if we believe. Have you ever or have you accepted forgiveness from God? Have you accepted it? Ephesians 4 and 32 says what? And be ye kind. See that? Be ye kind. I'm just giving a few verses out before we close out. Be kind to one another. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Even as for Christ's sake has forgiven you. That's Ephesians 4 and 32. I want you all to put these verses down. And they will instruct you on how to forgive and why to forgive and who to forgive. Mark 11 and 25. And when ye stand praying, forgive. And watch this. If you have an all against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your sin. So that's why when we pray, we must pray a prayer of forgiveness. Luke 17 and 3. Take heed to yourselves. Look at you, in other words. Look at the man in the mirror. And this is one that we can't get. We, we just say we are born again. We just say we are Christians. We are that's so heavenly bound till we know earthly good. Again, this verse says, Take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. So when somebody do you wrong, it's all right for you to call it to their attention. The scripture says, rebuke him. You did me wrong. Why did you lie to me? And if he repents, I didn't mean to do that. The Bible says what? Forgive him. Matthew 6 and 14. Say, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. We got to forgive each other their trespasses. We have fell out with everybody. The people on the job, we fell out with them. Some of just, us just, just, just <coughs> hold grudges and we can't forgive nobody. That's why I don't talk to people on my job. That's why I don't, I don't fellowship with people in my church. That's why I don't be bothered with people. That's why I don't have people coming to my house. It can't be nothing wrong with everybody but you. Colossians 3 and 13 says, Forbearing another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. If somebody have a quarrel with you, you know what I don't understand is, when two people are arguing, all you doing is, <laughs> making your own blood pressure go up. Because if I keep arguing, and you keep arguing, all I'm looking at is two dummies. Because there's no room for rec reconciliation when two people are angry. That's why the Bible says anger, but what? Sin, not. All right. Luke 6 and 37 says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not. And there's too many of us that condemn. We so quick to see the moat. I saw a body in the store. But that's not your business. What about when? You may not go to the store, but look, look what's in your house. You don't need to go to the store, but you look, see somebody, car pull up next to the store, and you parked at the dope house. <laughs> Amen. Amen.
judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not. We have to learn to pray for one another. We have to learn to love one another. We need to learn to have mercy for one another. We need to have grace. It says, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Matthew 18 and 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how off? <laughs> and that's what a lot of us said. How many times do I have to keep forgiving this person for the same thing? Now, I forgave you. You know, we, we put a number on it. Now, I forgave you two times. Now, the third time, this is it. Amen. We, 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 we not going past three. I ain't going. Uh-uh. This is your third time lying, lying to me. This is the third time you didn't do what you said. you. So we put a number on it. Peter said to the Lord, How oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive? And I forgive and I Forgive him. Till seven times. Don't forget, we, we, we got folk at three. We got it at three. Peter did have a little bit more sense to know that we, get, we, that we need to forgive more than three times. So he asked Jesus, he said, seven times? And we know the answer to that, Jesus said, Seven times, seven times. In one day. What Jesus was saying, there is no number of forget unforgiveness. First Peter 3 and 9. Not rendering evil for evil. Amen. That's a lot of us. We are due to people's stuff because they did it to us. Or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call. We are called as children of God, that ye should inherit a blessing that we can't have that type of spirit do unto others as they do unto you, but do unto others as you would have them. To do unto you. We're going we're gonna to do one more verse. That's Proverbs 15 and 1. Proverbs. A soft answer. A soft answer. Sometimes we say the right thing. But we say it so nasty. I'm talking about church folks. I'm talking about Christians. I'm talking about preachers. I'm talking about choir leaders. A soft answer turneth away wrath. When two people are hollering and screaming, you're not going to have nothing but a mess. So in the book of Proverbs 15 and 1, it says, A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. We have to be mindful. Of treating others not the way that we would like them to treat us, but the way that God treats us. Suppose because you didn't pray when you ate the food that God blessed you with, because you didn't say thank you when God woke you up this morning, because you didn't praise Him. When you went to your local church. Because you didn't give your tithes. And your offering. Because you did not give him the praise. Of thanksgiving. That God decided. That he would not bless. And forgive you. Where would we be? 
Might I say to you, my brothers and sisters, and the close of this lesson, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you dig one ditch, you better dig two, because the trap you set might be for you. Let us be mindful that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We as Christians are not just new men and women, we are new creatures. Old things have passed away and behold, behold all things become new. Our, that means our attitudes are new. Our way of thinking is new. Our way of living is new. Our way of loving is new. Our way of forgiving is new. God bless you. I thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, we invite you to join in with us next Tuesday, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. for Hope. Covenant Kingdom Ministries uh, Weekly Bible Study. Amen. It has been a pleasure. I am asking you, my brothers and sisters, that we continue in prayer to pray for one another. Amen. To hold up one another. To pray for our country. To pray for our president. To pray for our pastor to pray for our neighborhoods, to pray for our children. I'm going to ask you all to do something for me. Tonight, whoever in your house, I want you to embrace them. That's something we need to do. And tell somebody, I love you. Tell somebody, I love you. Your child, your brother, your sister, needs to hear those words. I love you. Amen. And you know what? I want to tell you all tonight, Reverend Arthur Williams and Sister Michelle and Minister Monica Body and all of you all that are listening tonight, I love you and anything that you can do about it. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come again in thy sight and thy presence, thanking you for allowing us an opportunity to come before your people and declare your word. You've been good to us. You kept us. You held us in the hollow of your hand. You protected us, you shielded us, you fed us, you clothed us, you've been merciful to us. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your favor. We thank you for being good to us, for smiling on us, so we give you a name to praise. Father, that you would look on each and every one. Bless in a special manner. We pray your grace, your mercy, and favor on each and every one who tuned in. Oh God, that you would bless us in a special manner. Touch somebody. If it be thy holy will, we pray for your healing power. We pray for deliverance. That you would cancel and rebuke every assignment of the enemy that you go before us and make even successful our way bless us in a mighty way if it be thine holy will until we meet again and now unto you unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy 
to the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And the people of God did say, Amen.